Welcome to the vlog. Look, it's nice and sunny. So I thought, I gotta slow down. <laughs> you talk up a hill, you just breathe really hard. It's nice and sunny, so I thought that the roads would be nice and dry. They were not. So my bike and my shoes are all dirty again. But, looks like it's going to be a nice bike ride. Let's keep going. I never clean my shoes. It's a shame that the best view on this climb is pretty much in the middle of the climb. So we're not done with our little workout. Not really a workout, you know, just consistent pushing for maybe 40 minutes. Yeah, so we're not stopping. I remember the first time I bought MTB shoes. I forgot the brand, but they were horrible. They were the cheapest shoes I could find. I put them on in the driveway, and then as soon as I stepped on the cement, the, the rubber traction thing on the shoe, you know, so you don't slip and fall cracked and fell off you really do get what you pay for and the funny thing was they were cheap but like I don't know maybe for a thousand or two thousand pesos more which if you think about it is not that much you can get something like this uh, Shimano something I forgot the name and model I did a review about it way back I should put a link to it somewhere but yeah, and these are so much better than the cheap Surfas. I think that was the brand. But I still ended up using that shoe for about a year, I think. And then finally, the hole where you screw the, the clipping mechanism for the shoe, that for some reason, the thread disappeared and you couldn't bolt, uh, you know, what do you call that thing where that you clip onto the shoe? You couldn't bolt it to the shoe anymore. And I was forced to buy a new pair of shoes. Also, I remember the first time I wore MTB shoes. They were, <laughs> I fell three times. First time I wore it, I fell three times. In fact, the first time I fell, I was, heading towards my destination. I even took a video of me wearing the shoes. I was using my phone. And then as soon as I stopped the video, I basically forgot to unclip. And since I forgot to unclip, I fell. Fell on the driveway. I think I still have the footage of that video. Here it is. So right after that video turned off, I fell. The second time I fell on that ride, that one ride, I was on my way home. I saw a friend of mine and then he stopped. So I stopped beside him, we were chatting, I unclipped my left foot 
and leaned on the right and fell on the right. It was kind of embarrassing. And then, as I was nearing home, I fell on the curb, like near the sidewalk. I just made a mistake on the curb and then fell on the sidewalk. It was kind of scary actually because, you know, there was kind of a busy street. And here in the Philippines, here in Cebu, you have a lot of motorcycles. So as soon as I fell on the ground, I looked back and checked if a motorcycle was on the way. Fortunately, there was nothing on the way and uh, I'm alive. filthy the bike the shoes obviously I gotta take a shower but man what a beautiful day for a bike ride it's just that the roads were super muddy yeah you know if somebody asked me if you really needed to buy um, MTB shoes or cycling shoes uh, I would say you know really it depends I personally don't think you need it although ever since I got it you know I've gotten used to it if you do buy it, eventually you do get used to having that connection to the bike. If you were going to get a gravel bike, I would go with MTB shoes because if you are going to go off-road, there's going to be sections where you're going to be walking and pushing the bike. And walking on road shoes is not ideal. All right, the Ride by the Numbers, shout out Dustin Klein. 31.59 kilometers, 1 hour, 47 minutes and 32 seconds moving time and 489 meters of elevation gain. Not bad for a midweek ride. Subscribe, no boring days.